Hi, my name is May. I'm a data science recruiter and welcome to Math and Magicians. Are you trying to optimize your LinkedIn profile so you can actually get found by data science recruiters? Well, I'll be going through my top tips today to help you optimize your profile so you can get found by recruiters and hiring managers within the data science industry. So keep watching. Now here's the thing, LinkedIn has over half a billion users on the platform. So if you're not on LinkedIn, the first thing is you need to get on LinkedIn because if you're not there, you're not gonna get found as easily. Recruiters, hiring managers across different industries, not just data science, rely on LinkedIn a lot more than they did 10, 20 years ago because you can find people easily. Now here's the thing, if you don't put any data out there, you're not gonna get as found easily. Like the platform is optimized based on the data that you allow it to search for. So it's very important that your profile is well presented and that you're hitting the right buzzwords at the right points to ensure that your profile will be easily found or much more easily found by recruiters and hiring managers. So the first thing I would look at is my picture. Now there's two things with pictures. One is that you want to choose something that's professional, that makes you look approachable, not cold or stoic or anything like that. You also want to make sure that it has just you within the frame and as much as possible is, you know, 70% of it is covering your face or shoulders, etc. You don't want things where you're standing at a distance and we can't quite see you or something where you've had to crop somebody else's hand out of it and we can still see parts of them. You want to keep it really tidy, keep it professional and keep your demeanor approachable. So that's really the first thing I'd say about pictures. The second thing I'd say about pictures is you can also try and actually rename the picture to optimize it for whatever job description you actually want to be optimized for. So for example, if I wanted to be found as May the data science recruiter, I could rename my picture and save it as May the data science recruiter or top data science recruiter in New York City. And I save it as that. Now, what that does is it's not so much how it helps you on the LinkedIn platform, but it also allows Google to index you in the images section more easily as well. So you can generally be found as whatever it is that you're trying to optimize for. So that's another quick little tip you can also do to get yourself sort of found in the niche that you're most interested in. Now, the second thing you want to do is look at your headline area, which is right at the top. This is valuable real estate and you want to use it to your advantage. You want it to be eye catching. You do want to add a few of the buzzwords, but it's a really a good opportunity to convey very quickly the essence of what you're about. So, you know, I've seen really cool things in data science, such as, you know, I tell stories with data or I help to really make an impact with your bottom line, et cetera, et cetera. You can be creative, but I would advise you to keep it short and keep it value driven and if possible, try to hit some of those key buzzwords that we're looking for as data science recruiters. And it's very much driven around things like words as simple as data science or data engineering or whatever it is that you do. Try to make sure that you include that there. Otherwise, it can seem a bit ambiguous if you say you're, you know, you design math algorithms, you know, for what purpose exactly? Try to really make sure that it's value driven and demonstrate your impact. And the third thing I would say is your career summary. Now here you want to make sure, especially if you're a data scientist, that you really hone in, keep it nice and to the point on what area you're within in terms of the data you're looking at. We've discussed this in some of my prior videos, what data sets you're looking at, the type of analysis you're doing on the data sets and the insights you're drawing to demonstrate value and impact for the business. So you really want to be able to encapsulate those three key attributes very succinctly in that section of your LinkedIn profile to really demonstrate the essence of what you're about and the impact that you're driving for the business. Now, the next area is experience. And I would say with this, what you want to make sure you're doing is when you link to your previous job opportunities, you want to make sure that it's picking up the right company in terms of the logo of that company actually showing up. What you don't want to do is make up your abbreviation of what that company is called because what LinkedIn will do is it will just put a generic sort of building 
as the logo and sometimes it doesn't really provide credibility especially if you've worked for a company that is a very strong brand in the marketplace you want to make sure that you're not using your own abbreviations to describe those companies but that your linkedin profile is actually picking up the right logos for those companies so just double check those things and make sure you tidy them up the next area i would say is your education now with your education obviously Similarly to what I said previously, you want to make sure that it's picking up the right university and colleges. I would say things like high school are probably not as important unless it's somewhere really prestigious that needs to go on there. But typically people are really only interested in that sort of university college degree. So you want to make sure it's picking up the right university and that you're not abbreviating and it's showing up with the right logos to endorse your brand in and of itself. You also want to make sure that, you know, if you scored really well at university, especially a prestigious university, you want to put that there. Even if it's not a prestigious university, you still want to put that there because the truth of the matter is it can be impressive in certain industries to actually go for people that are more academically inclined. So you really want to actually speak up about your performance and about what you've done and how good you were at certain aspects and things that you've done in your educational profile. If you have publications that you've published, you want to include maybe the top two or three ones that would be most interesting to someone looking at you from a data science perspective. You also want to make sure if you've got things like keynote speeches you have online somewhere and it's related to data science in some sort of way, you want to include those media points within your profile as well. LinkedIn allows you to do that. Again, similarly, I would rename them to optimize them for the data science field and use the appropriate words that a normal recruiter would be looking for. So try and put yourself in the shoes of a recruiter that isn't a data scientist, but he's looking for a data scientist. What would they typically be searching for? One of the most simplest thing is anything that says anything to do with data science. So try to make sure that those words really come through and you try to highlight your skills and experiences, projects and publications that would be most relevant to your profile in the industry that you're working in. The next section I'd be looking at is skills. Now with skills, you know, you do want to make sure you're hitting all the right sort of points that people are looking for. Um, and things like, for example, most, a lot of data science roles are looking for skills like Python. You want to make sure that if that is a role that you're going for, that it's within one of your top three skill sets in your profile. You get to pick three. You want to make sure that's included, for example. We really take a step back and put yourself in the perspective shoes of the type of job you want to go for, what they would be looking for as those top three skills. Like I said, the ability to code in those languages is very important. So you want to make sure that's included in your skill set profile. Obviously, you don't go buzzworthy mad in that area, but at the same time, you want to make sure you're hitting those key things that are being sought after in a data scientist. Now, the next section is interest. Now, this is not an area that people might not you know, think is important when they're being searched for, but it's something that recruiters and hiring managers can look at. Like, for example, there might be a Python in finance group. And if you're part of it, it demonstrates that, you know, you're taking that next step to be very engaged in a community that's focused in your area. So if you were looking for a data science job in finance, for example, it totally makes sense that you'd be part of that group. And I'd be inclined to think if I didn't see more data on your profile, you probably are working within a financial related field using Python skills in some manner. So it would give me a clue as to the type of candidate you were. So actually, you know, joining appropriate groups can actually be something very good for your profile. So you want to make sure that you've curated that really well and because it is a reflection of what your interests are, potentially what your skill sets might be as well. The next section would be recommendations. Now, you're not going to get frowned upon for not having recommendations, but if you can get recommendations, it's always going to be a benefit to your profile. So, you know, what you can do is send people that you've worked with in the past to put a recommendation on profile. It can also be for people that you're currently working with um, or any projects you've done in the data science sphere can also be included there. So anything that speaks to your skill set and your experience, anyone that can speak to that would be a great person to send a recommendation request to on LinkedIn and have them actually enter it onto your profile because it helps to boost your credibility as well. 
The next section would be to ensure that within the contact info section, you've appropriately named your links. And what I mean by that is rather than just putting your GitHub profile just there and leaving it as company website, actually change the name from company website and say GitHub profile. If you have a blog and it has a name, especially if it's a name related to data science, put the name of the blog. Don't just leave things as the standard default that LinkedIn provides, but actually try to optimize it to be more specific to the niche that you're driving at be it a data science blog or a GitHub page that demonstrates the data science projects you've actually worked on. The next thing I would say is to turn your visibility on. I know that sounds really like simple, but actually turn your visibility on in your LinkedIn profile to ensure that you are searchable within LinkedIn. It's nice to have put all this data together, but if you're not sort of selected to be found, you won't be found. I'd also say in addition to that, don't be so wary of recruiters looking to connect with you. It's not oftentimes that they necessarily want to talk to you about a specific opportunity right now, but if you're within my network, for example, it means that when I do have an opportunity and I put it up, it might be something that interests you in the future, you have been connected with me so you can actually see my updates more easily. So I'd encourage you to not shy away from adding recruiters to your network because it's a great way to keep up to date with what's happening in the marketplace. Even if you're not in a position to move right now, it's still good to know what's actually happening in terms of, for example, it could be for compensation reasons. Maybe you want to have a conversation before you go into your next meeting with your manager about your expectations for the following year. It's a great avenue to be able to check with a recruiter like myself within the data science field, what's happening in the marketplace, what are people expecting from my level of experience and skill set, et cetera, et cetera. It gives you a baseline that isn't that doesn't have a vested interest in your particular role right now. It's kind of independent. And so it's not biased towards, you know, someone in your current company telling you, well, this is the max we will pay. You actually know what the market is actually commanding at that very point in time. So it's useful to ensure that you're networked with top recruiters like myself to give you that independent feedback of what's happening in the marketplace. And then actually take action. Actually put everything we've just discussed and go and update your profile right now. It's probably gonna take you max 15 to 20 minutes to do this. And once you've done it, you just have to wait for the profile to get updated by LinkedIn and you will automatically start getting better opportunities potentially coming your way because now you're a lot more searchable and can be found by recruiters and hiring managers. So. I hope you've enjoyed my update on LinkedIn profiles. If you would like more specific information tailored to any specific role you're looking to capture within the data science market, please download my free guide below to optimize your profile and optimize your resume for that. I'd love to hear your feedback, any comments you have, any other questions you have about LinkedIn update profiles, please drop them in the comments below. Like, follow, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next episode of Math Magicians. Have a great day.